more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Say what? Your man Shane Waldron hired as the Bears next OC? Color me not surprised. Shane Waldron is damn good. I mean, extremely creative. I love covering that man's sets uh, with his, his 13 personnel, a lot of the stuff that he does out of 12 personnel. Uh, some of the run game stuff, his motion series, definitely one of the best in the league. But he does come with a couple of drawbacks, in my opinion. That man's play calling sequence can be very formulaic. Run on first down and then expect Geno Smith to bail you out with a suspect offensive line the next couple of downs. As a matter of fact, you'll run a couple of downs and then put Geno in an attainable situation there, right? Not all the time, but a lot of the times, though. So while they do get bailed out and he does have the ability to go to other styles of sequencing, right? It doesn't happen in the red zone. That man is struggling in the red zone. To be honest, if I'm the Bears, I hire that man some help just for red zone play calling. All right? Maybe he gets it together. Maybe what he needed, to be honest with you, is because he's so creative with the 20s with the pass, having a pocket passer like Geno Smith. Maybe he does need somebody with some legs. Think about that, right? That's not Geno's thing that he can run if necessary. Him with Justin Fields. Now listen. I don't think people are calling me a hater anymore, huh? right? When I'm doing analysis. Justin Fields now, a few years into the league, is exactly what I described in all those film studies that I did when people said that I was a hater. Right? Yeah. Well, with someone like Caleb Williams, he's a head coach Now the next season. Then Caleb Williams has to learn from someone else. Uh, with Justin Fields, he's already there. Uh, if it happened to him, you just continue to motor on with your veteran quarterback. So, listen, I can't front, though. Your man, Shane Waldron, to the Bears is scary. The Bears are one of these up-and-coming teams, man. ton of talent on the defensive side of the ball that people don't even recognize. Y'all saw that love that I gave my man, Javon Dexter, uh, when he was in high school through college, and then he didn't disappoint in his rookie season there, man. So, on the offensive side of the ball, that cat, DJ Moore from out here in Philly, yes, sir, you already know. Uh, man, to me, it's just about making sure that offensive line is up to snuff and uh, Shane Waldron should be able to do some things there. So, listen, I'll just bring in a couple of a few clips from some old videos or something like that so you can see some of the stuff that Shane Waldron does. Uh, if Geno Smith uh, is not in Seattle, uh, him as a backup quarterback with Shane Waldron in Chicago, being able to teach what, whichever quarterback is there, that offense or being an insurance policy in case the Bears are having a good season and someone gets hurt, I think will be worth his weight in gold. So, Geno Smith can play some damn good football. Don't let anybody tell you anything differently, right? Same deal with Shane Waldron. Very good offensive coordinator. Uh, just has to work on his play calling sequence and definitely needs to work on his red zone. More like the low red area, man, like like 10 to the end zone, right? That's where, to me, he struggles at the most, right? But it could have been Seattle's personnel. Uh, we shall see. All right. Oh. You get Okariki here playing off of Aziz Ojolari. You get kind of a late pass protection here, kind of pushing Okariki into Gino. Gino does a good job of depending, of deciding what, <laughs> what he's going to do in the moment there. Spur of the moment here, depends on the situation, dots. Okariki coming. He has a throw off his back foot. That over route is going to be pretty. Look at that. Oh, look at the motion there. The ball, look at the spiral over the shoulder, King Griffey style. Yuck. To lock it, launch. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. You get that quick play action right there. And then look at this. Two tears in the bucket. Bang! From way downtown. Bang! Look at this, man. Look at the product placement. Oh, virgin tight window of opportunity right there, right? Virgin tight window. <laughs> great catch by Lockett. Great throw by Gino here. A Lockett launcher of himself right there. But look at that, man. Look at the room. The, there's not much going on right here, right? Not much real estate left there. Put it to where 
Only it could be in this particular situation, got it there, and a great job by Tyler Lockett getting two two knees in or a knee equals two, whatever that is right there, right? Hell of a throw right there, man. I got to look at that joint again. Oh, uh, from way downtown. Look at that touch. Bang. Come on, as my man Mike Breen would say, what are we doing here, man? This is beautiful. We talked about this one on the last one. I didn't give it its proper due here. So you have Bobo here, right, on that kinetic action. Uh, you, obviously, you're working out of 13 personnel. I believe you have Fan getting getting depth right there. A uh, little bit of an over route here. Or maybe just a shallow crosser here by Disley. And then I forget what Kobe Parkinson does, right? I had one person come up on here talk about uh, Kobe Parkinson's name was Toby Parkinson, right? It was extremely sure about themselves, too. He'd be getting some weird shit up on the internet sometimes, right? But check this out right here. My man right there I talked about before. Look at the arm action. Look at the angle and bang right there, right? I just had to get that there, right? Gave him a super stiffy right here. Pause. You get that slide protection from this, right? Because you're running with that hard zone flow, but you're leaving a lot of naked, right? You're working naked back here, right? I got to pause that again. And Aiden Hutchinson is guys, but he does not panic, right? He doesn't panic and dirt the ball. He knows he can trust himself. And, of course, you can see the arm talent, the the arm angle right here to be able to get this pass off depending on the situation, right? Dots. And then, of course, you get Disley with the bink right there. My man, coma toast right there, right? Fertilize that man right there into a coma. <laughs> we just had, That was my special request. Somebody said I didn't give that. It's just do right there. But I love that play that there from Gino. Uh, just because it shows, right? I think it might show a little bit of growth from even last season, right? They're not really panicking in that. And um, being able to throw on the move, he he seems to have worked on, right? Even better than he was last year. And then being able to change some some of the arm slotting. So, especially for a guy like Gino, who has a conventional throwing motion there, uh, that could be a little bit of a doozy to try to throw off different angles and platforms few plays in a row and notice the traffic around Gino right here clear breach right here look at it oh able to still get that off right I saw the little thing going around whatever like that when they said that uh when Aaron Donald was coming at him I don't know what he says I'm like oh my god <laughs> something like that right I don't know I felt like they were trying to play my man Gino know like he was scared or something like that you can see right here man a breach right during the greatest pass protection game of all time right there uh, because they only had one sack allowed. But a lot of this was because Gino was just thinking quickly, right? Yeah, people all over him on his feet and everything. And he's still able to complete a pass pretty accurately to Dennis Rodman Jr. himself. And I just love these sprint out plays. This is so like Joe Montana 1988 type shit right there, right? Throwing on the move, man. I noticed that last year he was starting to get good at it, man. And in this particular game right here, look at the slide protection right there. Look at him square his shoulders to the target right here. Beautiful throwing motion Geno Smith always had. And, uh, man, throws a great accurate ball once again. Who's that locket launcher right there? Mm. This almost looks like how you draw it up in practice with the QBs here. Play action fake hit, quick set. Look at the pressure there. Doesn't bother him. Deliver accurately. To your boy, Dennis Rodman Jr. Look at that. Off both edges here. All right, Stone Forsyth here having to deal with uh, a cat blitz or a cobra blitz right here from the corner. And then you have Jake Bobo right here. I don't know what the hell Jake Bobo is doing. Jake Bobo definitely forgot the assignment right here. He's having to Superman that hole in the Yo! air. Look at him. <laughs> and fertilize himself. <laughs> right? But Gino just steps up in the pocket. Right, like a professional, keeps his eyes on the prize, right between the numbers, Yaka. Oh. Yo! Is this not more the same here? Once again, another breach off his left side there, and he still delivers an accurate pass to, I believe, a floating Zach Charbonnet here. So don't play my man by trying to say the, the pass protection was a lot better than it was. He made it that way. Give this man credit, man. I swear to God, this man will never get the credit that he's due. There's always something that somebody's trying to pull the wool, right? Once again, you can see it right there. In the pocket is a breach. 
He calmly steps up in the pocket. He's getting touched right here. Stone Force Siphon FEMA mode, right? Pulling the rip, rip cord, abandoning the technique. My man has a small pocket right here. I want to say you have Aiden Hutchinson right there with a hand all up in the throwing lane. And look, he has to just float one, right? He floats that bad boy a little bit of touch right here and hits his outlet pass there in, in Zach Charbonnet. Continuing to move the team. The team, the team, the team. Like I said before, if it's a buffet, baby, you have have to have all the trimmings. Look how long of a throw this is for people who don't think this guy has arm strength. This is arm strength. Opposite hash throws where they're normally picked off and they go the other way if you don't have the arm strength to get it there. Look at this. Foot on the stitches. And, oh, damn near to the sideline. Matter of fact, let's see it from this angle right here. Yep, foot right there on the stitches, so he's legitimately on the opposite hash. And then Yaka delivers accurately with some heat pacing on it. Right, it's one thing to throw a deep ball and put all your body English and body weight into it. It's another to have a, a throw that has to be on a in an even plane. Right, it has to be a low level throw and still has to get there fast and accurately. Uh, that just opens up the entire field when you're able to do something like that. All right, last one right here, showing off that pocket presence and mobility. Look at the breach, Aiden Hutchinson off the right side again, and once again, Yaka. Yes, sir. Showing off that pocket mobility and pocket wizardry there on the set right here. <laughs> Your boy Stone Forsyth quarterback went again. <laughs> he got his dome popped up. <laughs> He's about seven foot three right there. Look, he got stretched all the way out. Seven foot three while Aiden Hutchinson over here. With the arm under move against Kerhan. Kerhan, he got a super uppercut arm. <laughs> Over-exaggerated. <laughs> he got that cartoonish arm under move, right? <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> so Gino had to vacate the spot right here. Detaches with an exit plan. And leaving them with exit wounds. Uh. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.